Some of you have asked me after my recent complete garden tour video, how do I get everything watered? Well, today I'm going to show you, so stay with me. In this big section of my front yard, I have quarter inch drip line everywhere, which I installed. It is not foolproof. <laughs> it gets clogged. Sometimes the emitters stop emitting and have to be replaced, but for the most part it works. And I highly recommend when you're putting it in, put it in obviously before you plant big plants. You want to really see how it's laid out and how it's going to work for you. And certain plants that you know are going to get bigger like trees, you want to circle two or three times. Don't worry though, you can always cut the pipe, add an extension and add more. It's a very flexible system. Unfortunately, I have to rely on city water and I have wanted forever to have a whole house water filter, but I don't have that. That's a big expense and and I know that when you put city water on soil, it cuts down the microorganisms, the healthy microorganisms, but I do what I can to replace that. And if I was going to be here for the rest of my life, I would definitely invest in it, and I highly recommend that. But that's what I've got in this front yard. Over here, I have my flexible hose. Now, Renee gave me this concrete hose planter. It's a hose holder. You can see it's built for a hose. It's very heavy. It's made out of concrete. <laughs> so it's really hard to move. I hesitated using one of these for the longest time, but they stretch and I have so many nooks and crannies in this small front yard. I need a hose to be able to go around all these plants. And because this is long, when it's all stretched out, this hose stretches my entire, well, almost my entire front yard. And you know I have a lot of containers, so I water all of my Oyas and my containers with this hose. And I have one of these shower, well, it's not on, <laughs> shower heads on it. And it's always great to have this so you don't have to bend over because you want to get this close to the base of your plants. You don't want to be watering your plants from overhead because that encourages mildew and fungal diseases. You want to be watering right at the base of the plants if you can. As you can see, this Jerusalem artichoke is dying for a drink. And when you put Jerusalem artichokes in a big pot like this, they do need a lot of water. It's generally recommended to water early in the morning or in the evening because the last thing you want to do is water in the heat of the day and the leaves get wet and then they get burned from the sun. But the exception is if you see one of your plants and it really looks like it's about to faint, <laughs> get out there and get it some water and try to water right at the base of the plant. I keep this Jerusalem artichoke with a big saucer at the bottom because these cloth pots, the water tends to go out the sides very often. And if it collects in the tray, it will be soaked back up. And that really doesn't happen with plastic pots. Today I ran my irrigation. So tonight I'm just watering my Oyas and my pots. The biggest challenge when you get things too crowded is if you do have Oyas, you've got to get in there and fill them. And I've got 
four Oyas back in this jungle. So let's go see if we can find them. <laughs> oh, I made a discovery. You've got to see this. Hold on. This is my first four o'clock blooms this year. I've got lots of four o'clocks all over, but these are the first blooms that have opened. And they open at four o'clock. <laughs> of course, it's almost six now, but they're open. I actually don't know if I can get through here. I'm sure I'm gonna break some stems trying to get through here. Okay, all right. Now, I think, actually one of them is right here. Not sure you can see that. It's right over here. Okay, here is one of my large Oyas. And I am going to fill it up. It had an empty sound when I took that off. Okay, this is real time and how long it takes to fill up. So this is the biggest size. I have two of these. I believe that's a gallon. And if you've never seen Oyas, these are fabulous because if you can't get to water for a while, what happens is it feeds the roots and the roots take what they need. And it doesn't evaporate, obviously. Okay. That sounded kind of empty too. Two little ones over here. Just gotta get my foot down here. Okay. And like I say, I love the fact that this hose is stretchy. Okay. This nasturtium kind of covers up everything. These are the quart size. The sun has now left my entire front yard. I have one more over here. Very hard to find. Um, oh, just look at, I just want to show you these. If you've never seen nasturtium seeds, look at the size of these things. You can actually eat them when they're green like this. Felice was talking about the seeds in my nasturtium pesto video, 
how you could eat them. Okay, let's find the... It's right in here somewhere. It's not far. It is really time to do something about all this. Oh! <laughs> I went too far. The other one's back over here. Okay. These Oyas are made by Grow Oya, and I'm going to be doing another video just on these guys. The reason I put two Oyas right here, even though I have this drip line, is because the drip line was not functioning properly. It's higher, I don't know what the problem is, and I said, you know, I can't risk this pepper plant not having any water. So, it is flowering. Some of the newer leaves look somewhat healthy, so fingers crossed on this Pekin pepper. If you want to have a habitat for wildlife, you've got to provide a bird bath. Bird baths under trees get very dirty. Rocks get slimy. Unless you have a separate feeder for butterflies and bees, they drink a lot of water. If you provide a rock that has a little indentation, they can dip in there and not drown. You want them to be able to access the water without falling in. And without that, that is hazardous for butterflies and bees. I like to get just get some of the slime off of the rocks every time I clean it. Okay. And it's great if you can put filtered water in your bird bath. Obviously, I have my rain barrel setups. I have three different setups. I've talked about them a lot. This was the first one I did and I didn't know what I was doing and this is the way I set it up. It's not ideal, but this is the way it's set up. And of course, I use rainwater. I try to parse it out. I try to not get through the whole summer without a little bit of rainwater. Usually we have no rain between March and October. Nothing, usually. But this year has been different. We've had a lot more rain and so I'll be taking this out as I feel like it, uh, just to give the plants an extra boost. And a lot of times this is reserved for young plants that I want to take off or for container plants that don't get as much nutrition as the ones in the soil. However, the ones in the soil <laughs> have the city water, so it's a toss up. When rainwater is exhausted and we need to water, I have, this is what I call dip and go. And I have two of these, one on this side of the house, and I have a chlorine filter here. Usually I keep this full and I keep a lid on it so no mosquitoes are laying eggs. But if you keep this full and you need to water quickly, just, then you've got two gallons right there and you just go and by the time you get back from watering that that two gallons is usually replaced in here and you can water a lot of pots very quickly with a dip and go bucket rather than sitting at either your rain barrel or right here waiting for this to fill up because most chlorine filters don't have that they don't put out a lot of gallons per second or a minute or whatever <laughs> because it's got to be filtered so that makes sense 
All my bamboo in the backyard on this side and that side of the property has half inch drip line which is tied into the main underground irrigation in the backyard. Except for this one raised bed which has quarter inch drip line irrigation. This is my backyard hose. This hose is actually made for organic gardening. I think there's something non-toxic in the material it's made with. I have another shower head here. And attached to this, I have another chlorine filter. This one is, uh, this is called Green and Go. I have different brands. And this hose will reach everything in the backyard about halfway up the driveway. One of the things that annoys me the most about gardening is wrangling the hose. This particular hose crimps very easily. I actually haven't found a hose that doesn't crimp. as far as it reaches back here. I just have a few pots of succulents, but they only need watering once every month or two. This one's blooming. This is my other dip and go, but it's almost empty. So after I get done watering, then I just set that to fill up. Everything that is above the table, I have to hand water. And I just noticed that these four clocks are open also. Aren't they gorgeous? Now I just have to finish up with the stretchy hose in the front and I'll be done. I have a rather ancient valve system for the old irrigation system. This was here more than 25, 30 years ago. So it's costly to set these up. So really think about where you need it and what you're gonna be doing before you put in your underground pipes. This is my chlorine filter for the stretchy hose. And this is Boogie Blue Plus. Feels like it's leaking a little bit.
Thanks so much for watching this channel, liking my videos, and especially sharing them with your friends. Please look in the description below for ways to support this channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, why not try these?